Hello again, brethren. <clears throat> uh, this is the third and final video. Well, technically, this will be the fourth because um, I'm redoing this video because I kind of kind of lost myself a little bit <laughs> in, uh, when I went to do this, and I want to avoid that. <clears throat> but um, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn into your King James Scriptures to Matthew chapter 18. I have seen and heard this thrown around way out of context. Um, and especially by those who are not of the Church of the Living God. Um, and it's, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, so, get your scriptures and follow me along, of course. Matthew chapter 18, we're going to read verses 15 on to verse 17 to start. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's note something very quickly. This is before the crucifixion. This was still under the law. Okay? Still under the law. Okay? before the crucifixion, before Christ died, uh, buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? It's very important to keep in mind. But for our instruction in righteousness today, it definitely applies. But, Matthew 15 on to verse 17. Moreover, if thy brother thy brother, shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Now, what do we know here in these three verses of Scripture? Look at verse 15. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now the argument comes up, well, who is my brother? Now, today, in the time of the Gentiles, you're saved and born again. You know, you're saved by grace through faith, by the grace of our God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you're saved. You're my brother or my sister. Okay? We're brethren. If you're truly saved and born again. Okay? So, you're my brother. So, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Okay? But, some will say, well, who is my brother? You know what I've heard? You know what I've heard? Go to Acts chapter 17. I've run into this one. Acts chapter 17, verses 22 under verse 28. Acts 17, verses 22 under verse 28. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Okay? Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. God, our God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're saved, you're born again, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, who is God, 
the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Okay? This is your, this is the temple. Not these church buildings. Okay? Catholics. Not the church building. The body. Okay? This is the temple. Okay? Let's continue. Neither uh, God that made the world and all things therein, we're reading this again, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. Catholics, Catholic in their practice and in their faith, they teach that they need the Catholic Church. That there's no salvation outside the Catholic Church. That is what Catholicism teach. Yeah, and they mean their church buildings, not the body. Yeah, let's continue. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. Now watch this. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Now hold up. I have run into, say, like, see, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. So, since we all have man's blood within us, so that means we're all brothers. We're all one community. We're all one family. Bring everybody together, like at the Tower of Babel. They all come together and then they make themselves a tower to reach up to heaven, you know, that they may be as gods, you know. Bring everybody together. We're all of one blood. So where you see we're all brothers. <clears throat> Have you run into that one yet? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, keep reading the verse. And hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. We are man. Yes, we all have blood running within us. Yes, and that. But are we all brothers? Are we all sisters? Hardly. No. No. Not at all. Let's keep reading. That they should seek the Lord. See, see, you and I of the Church of the Living God, we're brothers and sisters because we all have the same Father. Someone who is not of the Church of the Living God, but yet says they are our brother and go to Matthew chapter 18. Uh, no, 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 we're not brothers. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Doesn't work like that. Okay, it doesn't work like that. And note here that they should seek the Lord. You and I are one in Christ Jesus if you are truly saved and born again. Okay? That means I'm your brother, whether you like it or not. You're my brother, whether I like it or not. And vice versa with you sisters, okay? Are you truly saved and born again, though? <clears throat> that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, and move, and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So, if you ever run into someone who likes to say, well, we're all brothers, it's like, well, you, you got to continue reading the verse. And then tie in verse 27, that they should seek the Lord. See, you have the church of the living God. We all have the same Father. One God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. We have the same Father. You ain't saved, not of the church of the living God. Your Father is the devil. We're not brothers, see, or sisters, whatever. Doesn't work like that. Okay? I'm sorry. It doesn't. 
Okay? But now go back to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 18. <clears throat> you know, I've seen this used by people who are not of the Church of the Living God uh, so many times, and it's just... <laughs> so come on, man. And it's just enough. Enough. Now, let's look at verses 21 on to verse 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Okay? Now, <clears throat> We see in verses 15 on to verse 17, it's about thy brother. Go to him privately. And if he will not hear thee, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. Go to your brother, your brother of the church of the living God, privately. Going to be obstinate? Get two more brothers or sisters, whatever. Then go to And if he neglect to hear them, then tell it on to the church building. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Tell it on to the church, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the people. Not the building hierarchies. The people. You, like, you know, we went to brother or sister so-and-so. I went to him or her privately. Didn't hear me. Got two more brothers or sisters. Went to him or her private uh, with them. Wouldn't hear it. You're a little messed up. You, you didn't sin. But I came to you privately. Got two more people. You know. Okay. Didn't hear it. Got to tell the church. The body of Christ. Okay. Church of the living God. That's in accordance with brethren. Those of you who are of the Church of the Living God. Okay? And then, verses 21 on to verse 22, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and forgive? And I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. Ephesians 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Sometimes I wonder if that's willful, willful ignorance on some people's parts. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. <laughs> But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, and this, the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that spirit. Spirit of truth. He shall guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. No. Uh, if so, that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, one God. That ye put off con concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 
some will be like, well, see, it's, you don't have to. Uh, it, it, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and live in anger, bitterness, and wrath. Go ahead. Go ahead. See what kind of walk you're going to have with the Lord. Let's continue. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Members one of another. And it says the truth to your neighbor. We are members one of another. Okay? We, as the church of the living God, are to be examples unto the lost. We are the ones to be the quickest to forgive a trespass from those of the lost world. Okay? Be like, hey, okay, you, you've done some bad things to me. But see, you're not saved. And I get that. But I forgive you. I don't, I don't want anything to do with you. You, you stay over there. You do what you got to do. I forgive you. But go away. Okay? Go away. We are to be like that. Yes. Because let me tell you something there. Church of the living God. You have the Lord in you and you're holding a grudge. You know, you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to get bitter. You're going to get angry. You're not going to trust even your own brethren. Your true brethren, by the way. And that's going to affect the way you walk. It's going to affect your time with our Lord and the scriptures it's going to affect the way you speak unto the Lord in prayer it's going to affect everything like it says in Hebrews do, uh, that you don't let a root of bitterness spring up whereby many are defiled I just butchered that go find it yourself okay but yes we are to be a forgiving people okay we are we are we are in most cases, you know, if someone's blaspheming the Lord, it's like, Lord, they're ignorant. May you have mercy on them. But there again, as the church of the living God, you hold on to a grudge or a bitter or angry without a cause. And that's just because you got your little tootsie stepped on, you know. Let's continue. Be ye angry. And sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Confessing a fault, I have failed at that one from time to time. So have you. It's okay. That happens. Repent of it. Confess it. Get over it. Move on to the next one. It happens. Pay a price for it said you'll be forgiven but you will pay a price for it because neither give place to the devil you as the church is the we as the church of the living God big part when we allow these things that are Part of those who are not of the Church of the Living God to rule our lives, to run our lives. It's not going to affect our salvation, but it's going to affect our walk, our testimony, our daily lives, our thinking, our praying, our study of Scripture. Yeah, yeah. Got to be aware of bitterness and not letting things go. <laughs> Not letting things go, you know. Let's continue. <clears throat> let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Working with your hands. Now that's talking about physical labor, but then again, um, the Lord has given you a gift to uh, be in the scriptures. To study and rightly divide the scriptures, you know, you're using your hands to turn the pages, stuff like that, you know. It says, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Like Brother Matthew Melanson said, 
you know, those who have been blessed out there, that, that's one of the most powerful uh, sermons I've heard in a long time from Brother Matthew Melanson. But then again, right here, let him that steal, stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. There are certain of you, and one fine young brother in particular, who has also been called on to full-time ministry. Please do it. Quit fighting them. Quit fighting them. You know who you are. I love you very, very much. Pray for you every day. Pray for a lot of you every day, but quit fighting with them, brother. Get to it. Do it. Give up. And let him guide you. You know who you are. Stop fighting on him and fighting with him, brother. If he's called you full time ministry, <laughs> Hi, don't fight him. Don't fight him. Okay? Let's continue. <laughs> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I'm laughing because of certain things that are being brought to my uh, recollection. I'm going to say nothing. But uh, anyway... And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, today in this dispensation, we are sealed. You are eternally secure. You're not going to lose your salvation. But you can sure make a royal mess of your life. Especially if you're bitter, angry, holding grudges. Oh, it's just going to wreak havoc on you. It really is. It really is. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Right here. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. As he done for you, you ought to do unto the brethren. And unto others. You know? I remember hearing stories about uh, truly saved Church of the Living God. People who were attacked and stabbed by people who broke into their house. And they forgive them. Because they are of the Church of the Living God. And that forgiveness has... Um, really uh, worked a number on the attackers and stuff. They couldn't believe it's like, wow, you forgive me for doing that to you? And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Because out there, brethren, get even. Stomp on them before they stomp on you. Never let anything go. Keep gnawing at it. As if you're an amoral, narcissistic sociopath who digs for dirt. You can't get out of the past. The whole world revolves around you. That's not as we ought to be, brethren. Now, when it comes to defending the truth of God's word, the King James Scriptures, the true and real scriptures, uh, yeah, that's a different story. But if you let anger, clamor, bitterness, all those things get into the way, you're going to have an unfruitful walk with the Lord until you confess your sins, until you repent of them, 
in the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I've already addressed that thing, and so has the other brethren as far as that is concerned, just so you know. Okay. So when you go back to Matthew chapter 15, or Matthew chapter 18, beg your pardon, Verses 21 on to verse 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. You know, for those who think or claim they are of the church of the living God, rather they are Christians, who keep saying, uh, say, you know, keep pointing to Matthew 18, verses 15, on to verse 17, especially verse 15, you know, more precisely, uh, you're better off at least trying to pretend to go to Ephesians uh, 4, verse 32. That, that would, you know, you want to try to convince people? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Now. We're going to read here verses 23 on to verse 35. Okay. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom that will be in Jerusalem, where Jesus Christ will be ruling and reigning from, the king will be on the earth. Okay. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. Very significant. I forget what they said the weight of a talent was, something like a couple hundred pounds or something like that. But anyway, don't quote me on that. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Now note, a hundred pence is a lot less than, what was it? 10,000 talents. A lot less. Note that the Lord here forgave the servant who owed so much, but someone who had, in comparison, so little against this guy who was uh, forgiven all that debt, and he goes up to that guy, he's like, yeah! Let's read. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him. Get out of there, bug. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not. His fellow servant of the king could say his brother. Let's continue. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their lord all that was done. Then his lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts 
forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Now that verse right there is very key. It tells us something. Elsewhere in the scriptures, and you can find this on your own, it says, uh, forgive men their trespasses, because if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. I just paraphrased that. But the thing is, is in the millennial kingdom, if you don't forgive others, you're not going to be forgiven. Because that will be in the millennial kingdom where Jesus Christ will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. And see, it's works. Because in the millennial kingdom, it's all works. You don't need faith when you can go to Jerusalem and see God the Father, the King, Lord Jesus Christ, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. You don't need faith to go see that. He's going to be at Jerusalem. You're going to be able to go and see Jesus Christ, God the Father, sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. You don't need faith. Because he people in life right there. See. So see, during the millennial kingdom, If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. It's a work. Today, in the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, grieve not the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, right? You're not going to lose your salvation. You are eternally secure if you are truly saved and born again. You're going to heaven. Okay? Whether you like it or not. But see, today, if you don't forgive someone, that doesn't mean that you're not going to be forgiven as far as eternally. Uh, it's just going to mess you up. It's just going to it's just gonna mess you up. You're going to be messed up. You're going to run into problems. Big problems. And you're going to become very unfruitful. And if you are being fruitful, your fruit's going to stink. Got to beware of bitterness, brethren. Got to beware of holding a grudge. Because the Lord said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And you know what, brothers, sisters? Church of the Living God. There ain't one of you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. I ain't got one problem with any of you. Not one. I might not agree with some of your points of view and stuff like that, but you're my brother, my sister. I have no grudges. Nothing. 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 Those who think they are the church of the living God, but rather and or are Christians, have said a lot of wicked, mean, nasty things against me personally. Hey, I forgive you. I, I'm, you ain't saved. I know what's going on here, but hey, look, you're going to have a hard time. And you already probably are. And, and when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, I hope you are at the judgment seat of Christ rather than the great white throne. But I would not be surprised if a lot of people who um, would be at the great white throne, you know? You know, remember, brethren, you got to keep in mind when you got people throwing this at you, Matthew 18, verses 15 on to verse 17, more importantly, verse 15, you got to inspect their fruit and be like, ah, you're not even my true brother. Uh, so, even with that said, that you're not my brother anyway. I, I give you, I, I go away, you, you do whatever you want to do, being, you know, narcissistic, amoral, sociopathic, but hey, go, go, knock yourself out, 
<laughs> but uh, are you? You're not my brother. You're not my brother. Romans chapter ten. Romans chapter ten. I had done this video before, uh, but I had to get rid of it and do it over because I lost my cool and it's like Brad. I guess you're right. You're right. Romans chapter ten verses one on verse thirteen. See today, our salvation, we're we're sealed. We're not going to lose our salvation. So our staying saved is not fixed to whether or not we forgive someone else. Okay? We hold a grudge. Yes, the Lord can hold a grudge against us. If we're bitter, the Lord can be bitter against us. Yes, yes. But salvifically, we're not going to lose our salvation. How would you like to get up to heaven if you're of the church of the living God, my brother and sister? Yeah, you're going to get in. You're going to be in heaven, but... Yeah, you're saved. You can come in. But I'm ashamed of you. Yeah, you, you'll go to heaven. Because it, this book says, the scriptures say, that you're sealed. I don't know about you, brethren, but I don't want to go to heaven knowing that the Lord's ashamed of me, even though I'm in heaven with him. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 13. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, Christ and Him crucified, okay, imputed righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things should shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Now, now hold on. There are those out there who say that this is specifically written for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And it's all to skirt away from calling on the name of the Lord. And they go to, like, uh, what is that, in Joel chapter 2, see, it's for the Jews. When this is crossing dispensational lines, it's pertinent for us. This is right here, you know. See, those who say that this is for the Jews at the time of Jacob's trouble, this is for the Jews. Mid-Acts or hyper-dispensationalists, whatever you want to call them, heretics. It's all to get away from verse 13 especially. But let's continue. But notice, verse 5, the law and faith. Law and faith. Notice that. Let's continue. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And this is written unto the who? The Romans. And Paul's and Pauline epistles are doctrine for what? For who? 
this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? This is doctrine for us today, okay? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, someone can be convicted, but not broken, okay? For example, it's like, yeah, I, I I know I'm I know I'm a sinner, but I'm not as bad as this guy. Yeah, yeah, I know I've sinned, but you know, I still got some good qualities. That's the difference between conviction and brokenness. One, I, I can't tell you how many times out there in witnessing I've run into. Are you a good person? Oh no, no, I'm not a good person. And you keep talking to him, it's like, well. Okay, you say you're not a good person, you say you're a sinner, but yet you listen to them, there's self-righteousness is still there. And then sooner or later it comes out, and it's like, well, I haven't done what so-and-so has done. I'm not as bad as he is. See, they're convicted, but they're not broken. Over here, right across, uh, a little across the street from me, not literally, but right down the road, there is the McHenry County Lockup. The, the prison, not the prison, the jail. There are a lot of people in there that are convicted. And as I know for certain, a lot of them get out and they go right back in. They get convicted. But are they broken? See, there's a difference between being convicted and being broken. See, if you're merely convicted, oh, I just got to believe Oh yeah, I'm a sinner, but I'm, I'm, I'm not as bad as some people. You know? It's like, you tell somebody, it's like, well, I'll, Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven. You think Jeff Dahmer's in heaven, and you think me, that I'm not a good person, or I'm not saved, but yet you think Jeff Dahmer is in heaven? Self-righteousness. See, they, they convicted. But they're not broken. And see, someone who is merely convicted can be like, oh, sure, I'll, I'll just believe. And oh, I don't need to call on the name of the Lord. That's for the Jews. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is... <laughs> Uh, it's for the Jews. Uh, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, if you're broken, know you're a sinner. You're no good. You can't save yourself. That, yeah, you're, you're worse than the other guy. And that you've sinned against God. You're going to hell. You believe on the Lord and you call on him. They see they go hand in hand. <coughs> They're like peas and carrots. They, it just happens. Someone who is truly broken of themselves. Of their self-righteousness. They believe and they call on the name of the Lord. It, it, it just happens. See, those of you who have mere conviction, and not brokenness. See, calling on the greater when you being the lesser is so humbling. That's why you got a problem with it. Because you're not that bad. Because you're not broken. You're convicted, but you ain't broken. That's the difference. Beware if someone preaches mere conviction. Oh, conviction needs to be there, yes. But you need to be broken before you can be fixed. And once you are broken and believe on the name of the, um, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on God our Father, who saves you? God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, 
You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross. You believe on him. You're going to call on him to be saved. Oh, yes, that's what that says. You, know, you, you can't wait. It just happens. And see, those of you who haven't been broken, you can't fathom that. Because you're not of the church of the living God. It's that simple. Hence, you're not our brothers. You're not our sisters. So when someone who is not of our of the church of the living God likes to use Matthew 18, 15 through 17, verse 15, especially are they our brother, our sister? Watch how you use that. Again, um, if you're a Christian and you keep throwing that around, if you want to make it a little bit more plausible, at least for those who aren't aware, at least go, at least start trying to use Ephesians 4, verse 32, okay? Because if you continue reading in Matthew chapter 18, it's more, more has to do with the millennial kingdom. Yes, instruction and in righteousness is there, but for today, come on. You want to try to be at least this little bit more believable onto those gullible people out there? Uh, at least try to use Ephesians 4.32, okay? Uh, anyway, brethren, that's it. Um, like I said, I had to redo this video because the first doing of it, uh, the Lord was not pleased with it. I went off a little. I lost my cool and... Uh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Especially in ad hominem things. I can't do that. I can't. So, anyway, brethren, I love you. I hope this, uh, I hope the Lord be glorified in one way or another. Um, gonna start, it's uh, 4 41 p.m. my time. I've been doing this ever since oh, 11, with little breaks here and there, of course. Um, but, um, going to start uploading these with the first one I did and finish up with this one so um, don't know when my next video will be it'll probably be um, hopefully Lord willing Saturday or maybe Monday because I know on Sunday brother Brian has his big um, live stream thing and I'm not going to try to compete with that but uh, I love you I'm praying for you uh, and also, brethren, very quickly, if you make it through this, uh, please keep your sister Susan, my wife, in prayer. Um, she had to go to the hospital today. Um, she's having some major physical stomach issues and stuff like that. And they want to, um, if it is something this, I forget what they called it, she might have to go to the hospital. Um, so please keep your sister Susan in prayer. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Thank you for so much for watching. If you do, I love you.